How's everybody doing out there? Uh, my name is Melvin Isaac. I am a certified producer for Brick Art Medium here in downtown Brooklyn. As you can see, I'm uh, taping from my uh, home because of the situation that everyone, the whole world is going through uh, with this coronavirus. So it's uh, challenging, but it's nothing we can do. We have to do the best that we could do. And uh, what I'm doing now is going to run my, uh, my artistic talent uh, show through home. So everything going to be done from here through home. Uh, I'm following the CDC uh, guidelines to stay at home, uh, wear your know, mask, I wear the mask when I go out, and gloves. Because you never know. You got people walking around, they don't even know they have it, and uh, they might sneeze or cough or whatever and give it to you. You don't have your mask or your gloves on, and you end up getting it. And if you got a family or kids, you end up sharing it with them too. So everybody will get it. So you don't want to do that. So I want to follow, I'm following the CDC. I hope that you do the same thing as well. But nevertheless, we are here, and uh, it's good that uh, we all still can uh, communicate, and that's why I'm communicating with you. And uh, I hope that everyone is uh, still feeling good, all in good shape, all healthy. And uh, when this first thing I heard when it broke out with the coronavirus, and I'm always getting my hair cut at the barber, but uh, when I heard that, I said, oh, no, no more barber until this thing goes, because you never know with the, the clippers and people coming there. And uh, so now what I did, I went out and got me some clippers, and I, I'm the barber now. Cut my own hair, and I, I just shaved it all off, because now I don't have to worry about going back and forth until this thing happened. And now I kind of like it like this, so what the heck. So that's my hygiene for that. Uh, so, before we start this, uh, you can watch my show, I'm going to put it on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, and of course the uh, Brick Arts Medium, and it will be on every Monday and Wednesday, uh, time will be 1 a.m., 11 a.m. and 4 p.m., and we'll be on at... Uh, Cable Vision 60, uh, 68, and uh, Verizon 5 42. It might be on 43, too. I'm not sure now. But uh, you can follow me on that, and I will give you the link to this in my video. But before we even start, the first thing uh, I want to share with you is a prayer. Because prayer has to come first. And uh, I want to share with you, and you're going to have a good prayer. And then after that, uh, I'm going to share with you some art videos. And then I'll come back, you know, uh, to close it out. But this is what I'm offering from the home of me. Some other, uh, probably I'll end up sharing with you some uh, videos that I have did. Uh, in the past, because I can't go out to do anything now, but uh, to uplift your spirit, you know, and there's some good videos, uh, there's some uh, art videos, uh, church videos, uh, modern videos, uh, boat ride video, but, you know, good videos, you know, that I share on the BCAP channel. And uh, so now, uh, let's get to the prayer now, because God got to come first, because we're in a deep, deep valley, and without that, uh, we don't, you know, we just look at it, well, I just deal with all this on my own, uh, now it ain't that time to be thinking like that, it's a spiritual situation that you got to embrace, that I feel that you got to embrace, uh, and have some faith, and believe, you know, that, uh, there's a God, there's Jesus Christ that can uh, 
bring us through all of this. Because other than that, you know, things ain't looking good for us. All right, so here's the prayer. Jesus Christ, you traveled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now, in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health through quality medical care. Heal us from our fear, which prevents nations from working together and neighbors from helping one another. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim invulnerability to a disease that knows no borders. Jesus Christ, healer of all, stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Be with those who have died from the virus. May they be at rest with you in your eternal peace. Be with the families of those who are sick or have died. As they worry and grieve, defend them from illness and despair. May they know your peace. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. Be with the leaders of all nations. Give them the foresight to act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve. Give them the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks. May they know your peace as they work together to achieve it on earth. Whether we are home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from this illness or only a few. Jesus Christ, stay with us as we endure and mourn, persist and prepare. In place of our anxiety, give us your peace. Jesus Christ, heal us. Thank you for praying with us. Now, I hope you all enjoyed that prayer. I think that was very good. It's right on time. And uh, now is the video of the art video that I want to share with you that it, it, it could help out with anyone that's uh, into art or not into art. You'd be surprised. You'll see these videos and it's going to, uh, you know, because you're at home. So, you know, like art will definitely help anyone out uh, because it's a therapeutic. It relieves tension, stress, and anger. So I think this is the best time to watch these videos. And you, you could do it on your own because uh, uh, they show you, you know, where this art video that, that I'm sharing with you that, um, that can help you and to become an artist. And even when this is all over with, people want to probably buy it. You know, I can't go down to Dick Blick to buy anything right now on my canvas because everything is closed. So all I can do is just watch these videos and learn from that as well. But I think this is very uplifting, positive. I think it's going to be great for anyone that's an artist, for you as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Good afternoon, Mr. Niels. I know you've been a member of the Fulton Art Fair since, gee, since the beginning in 1958. How did you meet Mr. Shirley Hawkins? Well, I get uh, a call from a friend of mine, Laura Scotty, who was the wife of uh, one of the artists in the Fulton Art Fair. 
Leo car. And she told me that uh, there was someone that wanted to start uh, uh, an exhibition at Fulton Park. This is Shirley Hawkins. Mm -hmm. When I come out of my funeral home, my place of business, I like to take a walk through my Bedford Stuyvesant neighborhood. I see my neighbors enjoying life. They are walking their dogs, the children are playing games in the street, and the adults are out socializing and shopping for their dinners. I hear all the time how bad Bed Stuy is. Bedford Stuyvesant is a great neighborhood to live in, a hidden gem. I wonder, how can I create a more positive image of Bedford Stuyvesant? I want everyone to know about the many talented artists who live here, like Ernest Critchlow and Jacob Lawrence. Hmm, let me think. I will start an art group with my dear friend Dolores Cardi and call it the Fulton Art Fair. I will get some musicians to come and play their instruments. This park would be a great place for artists to display their work. I will get some artists to come out to Robert Fulton Park and hang their work on the fence. People can come and see the creativity that surrounds them. We can make a weekend of it all and call it Fulton Art Fair on the Fence. What was life like in Bedford-Stuyvesant back in 1958? It was very, very lively. The park was uh, fantastic. Uh, you know, we had uh, an exhibition with maybe uh, 80 to 100 artists. And wow. Really the entire park. That's impressive. And uh, uh, it was unlike uh, anything that you've seen today because the uh, Boys and Girls High School was the, not the there. The school right behind us. There was uh, a bunch of clubs, the Monterey Club, the Berry Brothers, uh, the famous Berry Brothers tap dancers. No, oh, yeah. They had a club there and a tip top club. Mm -hmm. And there was entertainment in those places. So there was contact with the entertainers and the artists uh, at the fair here. So tell me about some of the other artists who were involved with Fulton Art Fair back in the, back in the day. Richard Mayhew was one of those. Okay. Tom Feelings, okay. Al Hollingsworth. Uh, Matt Pickney, mm -hmm. Louis B uh, Belisle, mm -hmm. Vivian Schuyler Key, who was mm -hmm. a mentor of mine. Mm -hmm. She was uh, here, a uh, fantastic sculptor and painter. And um, Leo Cardi, mm -hmm. who was um, uh, the husband of Dolores Cardi, who, who without Dolores Cardi, I don't think the Fulton Art Fair would have survived. Well, let me ask you, since you've been here from the beginning to the present, what, how do you see it progressing for the future? Well, uh, it was uh, much more uh, lively back then, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that uh, 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 more interest will be uh, generated uh, so that we'll get more and more participants in the fair, so we can get it back to the way it was uh, back then when we started. And uh, I see it growing. I see it it's coming alive again, so mm -hmm. hopefully in the future it'll continue to grow. I want to thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you sitting here on the bench on this wonderful fall day with me. I'm glad to be here and be a part of the Fulton Art Fair. And we're glad to have you. Thank you so much.
my name is Marcia Wilson and I'm here to celebrate the 60th anniversary for the Fulton Art Fair. 60 years is a very long time. It's very important that we do celebrate our artists, our black artists. And one of the things that I really, really want to express more than anything else is that we as a people must invest in black art. We must buy and support our black artists. Well, I would say take an interest in it. The younger people take an interest in art. Uh, parents uh, guide your children towards art because art, I think, is an uh, elevating uh, force and it's a peaceful force. And with a, a, with a paintbrush in your hand, you know, it's peace. And, and I think that's something that we should work on, striving for peace. And I think art lends itself to that, a peaceful world. Creating art is an act of love. And through that creative process, you gain so much on a personal level that that's incredible. When I paint, abs uh, when I paint abstract art, I am dancing, I am singing. I hardly pay attention to what I am doing because the forces of God slash love is actually working through me. I happen to paint abstract work flat, and. Uh, it's, it's really incredible. The only thing that I do when it comes to abstract work that I can claim to be my own is I picked out the medium. I pick out the paper and what size. I pick out the canvas and what size. But everything else, my choice of colors, the design within the artwork is something that works through me. I'd be enjoying the process, loving it. I'd be singing, I'd be dancing. I'm spiritually uplifted and happy. And I know when to stop. And I know when the piece is complete. It's when the name of the piece pops in my head, I've learned to stop right there. And that's the first time that I really look at the work and see what was created through me. I would say to the young people, yeah. or anybody out there, mm -hmm. you know, that we have, a, we have ability and qualities in us that we don't sometimes exercise mm -hmm. and play. We have it, but if you don't try or make a move, because most of us have uh, artistic ability, creative ability. We have it in us. Mm -hmm. We're born with it. Yes. We actually are born with the energy. Mm -hmm. So young people, what they need to do, if, it, it don't have to be drawing. It could be music. It could be writing. It could be dancing. Because that whole hip-hop thing came from... Uh, they used to have griots in Africa that told the story of the village and the elders and the this and the that. Hip hop is like a story. Mm -hmm. And it's a talking thing. It's like poetry in its own way. And poetry is a way of using your artistic ability with words. Mm -hmm. So I would say to young people, try and find something that you like to do and do it. And if that's not the way, then you try something else. Try some music, try reading, try pick up a pencil and a piece of paper. And don't be shy. 
Because a lot of people are shy. They're artists, but they are shy. Oh, I don't want nobody to see this. They might say this. They might. But if you don't try, it won't happen. It just don't fall out the sky. I mean, you got to find out what your ability is. And don't be shy about it. You know what I mean? Because I, I know a lot of artists, when they first start out, they're shy. And, oh, I don't think I'm an artist. Well, maybe in the beginning you're not an artist. But practice make perfect. Yes, indeed. A cat learn how to play music. He also don't play it right away. I mean, it's something he got to work on. And he work, usually when you work with somebody else that does the same thing you do, that have more skill than you, mm -hmm. they teach you. Because I, I, I've learned so much from being around artists. And most time, artists will teach you or tell you anything that they know that goes with the craft. It's very few times you might find somebody that don't want to share with you what they know when it comes to artistic ability. Like I say, writing, dancing, playing music, visual art, poetry. Most of these people are glad to share what they know with you. Mm -hmm. So explore yourself, explore your ability. And if you're shy, it's okay, but that don't mean you can't do it. Because if you don't do it, it's not done. What message so, that, and you've seen it twice, so something must be there, mm -hmm. you know. So talk about that, the message, and why did you see it twice? I saw it twice um, because it went by so fast the first time. I was really amazed at uh, mm -hmm. just seeing everything. And I wanted to slow it down by seeing it a second time. And I saw it the second time because I like what the opening words were. It, it kind of goes right past you. Mm -hmm. It's a child asking, I believe, his father a question and says, tell me your story. And mm. that's, that's how it starts. Mm. And the power of story and how stories explain beginnings and origins and give you history and you pass things down. And stories are so powerful. So when I hear that voice tell me a story, there was a little child saying, tell me a story. Mm and you got the, the, the beginnings, you went through the end, and you saw the future, and that's what stories do. They comfort us, they give us information, they empower us, and when um, I had my son, I read to him every single night from the time he was like six months old, all the way up to like we were, he was a teenager, we were reading the New York Times together, we were reading the Newsweek and mm -hmm. doing all of that. And not one day escaped where, and he would say, Mama, tell me a story, mm -hmm. and when, the Black Panther opened with Tell Me a Story. Mm. I was like, oh, my God. Mm. And then it went on to give this amazing and powerful mm. story. Mm. So that's why I went to see it okay. again. Yeah. Wow. So the message was? A story is stories. important. St story. It, yes. it gives you strength. It gives yes. you history and okay. empowers you. Really? It reminds you of uh, where you came from. Mm. And uh, it strengthens you. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And And the storyteller is key. I mean, back in the olden days, the yeah. storyteller was a very powerful figure yeah. in the community. Now we have, you know, all sorts of things yeah. telling our stories, but we have to tell our own story, and that's what happened there in that go. movie. Yes. But when it opened up with the little child saying, mm -hmm. tell me a story, I was off and mm -hmm. running. That was it for me. Coincidence. Uh, you are telling your story now. Yeah. Just what you just said. Mm -hmm. We have to tell our own. So as, as being on this show here, on an artistic talent show, you are actually revealing your story mm -hmm. and telling your story and sharing yeah. it to me, to the world. Yeah, yeah it's a good story it's too. It's very powerful, I'm telling you. Very powerful. The message I would like to leave with the public is that um, everything that we are surrounded with is an artistic expression. So the original creativity, no matter if you're into any type of spiritual, Reality, and in that spirituality, there is a creative or a creator. Uh, everything emanates from that. And being a participant and being a product of creation, I think we need to uh, appreciate that more. And in doing so, I think it made me a better human being. It allows me to uh, develop my character. And the other message is that 
we need support. Artists need support. You know, black artists, our uh, African artists, African American artists, artists from the Caribbean um, seem to be underlooked, you know. So I think we need to be supported um, and the public at large. We need your support to help us uh, support ourselves in uh, producing the type of uh, art that reflects who we are. Um, well, to the message to the community that I want to give, especially to the youth, because um, I also work at an art store and whatnot, and I like, and that helps me get more information about products. And I meet a lot of young students who come in, um, some in college, some kind of doing their own thing. Um, don't wait to be an artist if you you are born an artist. Don't wait until after college to, go, to graduate. Don't wait until a certain big uh, part of your life to become something that's always always been part of your life. Um, me personally, I when I was in school, I didn't wait until my sophomore year even to jump into galleries and and study work and go to museums and whatnot to exhibit and whatnot. Um, it's always I felt that. Art has always has always been a very difficult field. Okay, so I uh, hope you enjoyed this show. Uh, I wish everybody well again. Uh, stay at home. Wear your gloves, your mask. Uh, wash your hands. Uh, you got an anesthetizer, spray that, or whatever you got to be at. But uh, you know, make sure that whatever you do, stay safe and stay at home, like they have letting us know, the CDC.